making their presence felt. Half of Nigeria's electorate are women, but this is not reflected in its political leadership. You're cute, we're happy to have you, but you're not going to win. In Kato tried to run for a seat in her state. She found out firsthand that Nigerian politics is still very much a man's game. You have a lot of people talking to you in, condescending, uh, in a condescending manner. You have, I, I, would I call it sexual harassment? I think I would want to consider when I'm trying to be serious and somebody playing, come let me touch you, come let me hug you. Nigeria fares terribly when it comes to female representation in politics. Women occupy just over 5% of the seats in the state assembly. And globally, Nigeria's National Assembly ranks 180th out of 193 countries. That's the lowest in Africa. The underrepresentation of women in politics isn't, strictly speaking, an African problem. The country with the highest number of women in parliament is Rwanda. And in the region, Senegal does pretty well too. So the question is, why is Africa's most populous nation unable to do the same? Perhaps it has to do with the opinions of women of some of the country's lawmakers. When women contest in your constituency, they will say, when they go out to support our sister, they will go for her. And they will come here one day, you will find all these women in this chamber. And they will mess up. They will mess up. These comments were made on International Women's Day last year. We have a patriarchal culture uh, that subordinates women and uphold men. The candidate selection process um, is um, not transparent, is not fair. And then you also have, um, you know, money issues. For instance, a lot of women do not have um, the financial muscle uh, to, to contest elections and to run their campaigns. Research has demonstrated that quotas are the best way to tackle the structural inequalities that lead to low levels of women in government. But that will require political will, and there's no evidence of that yet. Maini Jones, BBC News.